And so now we arrive at the UV unwrap. Uh, before we can dive into that though, there, there are some preliminary things that I like to check on the mesh uh, before I get into it because it could just save time later on. So I've, I've got some uh, some custom pie menus and stuff set up, but you can do all these actions, just you'll just have to find the buttons and such. But I look for n-gons first, and it selects all the n-gons that are on the mesh for me right now. Now, it's not that I care necessarily about n-gons, but if your mesh is, is not triangulated in, in a consistent way, you can end up with weird shading errors and stuff on the normal map that that when you're starting out, you have a hard time explaining. So just know that if you have a weird shading error and it's right where some polygon is bending around something, it's probably a triangulation issue. So what I will typically do is select all the n-gons and then fire off a script that, that triangulates them for me. And that way you know, I know that they're triangulated. Now we do have a bit of a mess down here. This this I'm going to merge back into a polygon again. This whole thing up here, I think I can just merge these verts right into the corners and add one cut down the center, just to make that just to make that sit nicer. And it's not quite so ugly in terms of geometry. But we don't have any more of those of those n-gons, so. Uh, yeah, now we're good to go. We can start talking about UV mapping. So I will generally uh, look in my UV maps and delete any uh, you know, existing UVs that are there. And I don't have any uh, vertex maps, so that's good. So if I change my screen configuration to uh, bring up my UV window, now I can just start UVing pieces. Now this is a subject that I can make a whole separate video on and, and possibly will, but in terms of my UV mapping work, I just, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the stuff I do is covered by one of four actions, I guess, mostly three though. There's a macro that I've set up that does a planar projection and then relaxes the mesh. I have two scripts that do cylindrical unwraps depending on what axis it's facing. And I have a script that does an atlas projection. An atlas basically just takes all the polygons that are within a certain angle tolerance and tears them off into their own UV islands. It's super handy for boxes and stuff like that. And then it runs the orient. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the orient pieces command to get them you know, snapped and aligned with an axis so they're easier to pack. That that plus the unwrap function, which I use from time to time, those are the workhorses behind the vast majority of what I do. Just for fun's sake, um, let's look at my projection, my planar projection macro that I've set up. Now, obviously, this is a bunch of uh, moto speak jammed into this file, but you can get the basics of it. Uh, it moves the work plane to whatever I have selected. It turns on UV projection, planar. And since the work plane has been snapped to whatever was selected, I could just uh, assume that it's on the Y plane or the Y axis, I should say. So it does that, we apply it, then it turns on relax mode. And, and it does two different types of relax. And I'm not going to pretend what these are, the LSCM and the adaptive. It, it just turns those on and applies them both. That tends to lay everything out flat for me. And then down at the end, we reset the work plane because I don't want it to sit there you know, anymore. And I run the orientation macro, which, or command within Moto, which attempts to align the uh, UV island to a major U or V axis. And that's it. And all my other macros are pretty much the same thing. You know, one, you know, this cylinder and, and Atlas and all that, like I said, but that's the meat of it. And this was really just a matter of me going into Moto and recording a macro, you know, that did everything I wanted to do and saving it out to a file, then hook it up to a menu. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So lots of, so lots of what we end up doing with UV unwrapping is a judgment call. 
you, know, you decide what's going to work in the end and you can use experience to um, uh, to inform that decision obviously but there are some basic rules you need to follow especially uh, if you want to bake normal maps successfully and the big one to follow with normal maps is well it's pretty simple once you learn it but if you have a smoothing break on your low poly mesh, you have to break your UV shells apart. That padding uh, that, that, it, uh, that that provides is critical to avoiding seams and splooge and whatever else. Now the inverse is not true. Uh, you can break your UV islands up all you want, but you don't have to break the smoothing on the low poly mesh. So the rule uh, only goes one way. And it sounds very abstract and weird when you just say it like this kind of out of context, but uh, once you get used to following it, you'll have a lot less problems baking out your normals. So with the preamble out of the way, I think we're ready to start, start laying out these UVs. So uh, we have to create a UV map. So I'll just click that and say, you know, that name is fine. And then I will start walking through the mesh and you know, tearing off pieces that I want to be you know, on their own UV islands. Now something like this, these side pieces, I'll hit my, my planar macro and jam those out to their own thing. And once I unwrap something, I'll hit hide. And I'll grab this, planar it, and I'll probably even hit the rectangle command on this. Um, this is a super handy function that came in recently in Moto, but it is over here somewhere. I'm sure of it. Yeah, rectangle. If you hit rectangle, it attempts to to massage those that UV island into a rectangular shape. It needs to be made up of, of quads on all sides so it can do that. But super handy for pipes and various other kinds of unwraps. And you'll see more of that, I'm sure, as we go along. So, well, and of course, I have that on a hotkey. Something like this, I would just grab the front, blast that out. This whole thing can sit on its on its own. That's fine. You know, I tend to grab the low-hanging fruit first. We'll grab the front of this, of this button handle thing. Do that. Now I know I said that there was a rule with uh UV islands and smoothing, or yeah, and breaking the UV islands. And generally, I mean, you need to do it in the vast majority of cases, but something like this, it's gonna be kind of tucked away, tucked away behind a button and no one's ever gonna notice it. I sometimes will fudge, this, fudge the system. I'll give it a little bit of a bump like this, just to, just to make it so it's more contiguous, because I don't wanna to have to have all those extra vertices back there for no reason. Well, not for no reason, but not for you know, any visual impact on the mesh. Okay, so now with the front and back on, I'm just left with a cylinder. And if I fire up my uh, you know, my handy pie menu here, you know, I have an unwrap submenu, and I there's my two cylinder unwraps. Unfortunately, I haven't figured out a way to do a single command that handles both, so I try Y. Okay, Y didn't work, uh, which means that Z will work. It's just something that I need to work through, but yeah, you know, just try one and try the other, and just keep just keep trucking along. Something like this, I will grab. I could probably just grab the whole thing, to be honest. Yeah, you know, as long as this all unwraps nicely and flatly, you're fine. I, I'm gonna leave this big piece for the end. We'll do the little stuff around the outside. Stuff like this is great because I can just grab all the islands and, and run the plane or unwrap, which takes a few seconds, obviously, with that many islands, but then they're done. And I'll, I'll just pack these real quick so you can see that they are indeed all flattened out and ready to go. So hide those. This little foot piece. Okay, we definitely want, uh, the bottom is definitely its own entity so we'll just map that over there i'll grab this then i'll grab this edge right here and we'll do the auto unwrap here 
And this is probably fine the way it is. Um, I try to do uh, to have unwraps that are as flat and as straight as I can get them. But something like this, it's so small and there's going to be so many of them copied around the outside that I don't necessarily want to take the time to try to flatten that out perfectly. Uh, what I did right there is probably is, is probably going to be sufficient and fine. Now on this, I'll, I'll take that middle part out to its own chunk. This part feels... Now here's where it gets into, into the judgment call stuff. There's a couple ways that like I can unwrap this piece in the middle. And it really depends on how I plan to texture it. If I plan to just you know, throw a metal on it or something, then then flat like this is just fine. But if I plan to do something like add a brushed metal effect to it, you know, that I want to ha you know, have follow the curve, then the UV orient, you know, the UV island matters because a flat UV island is going to be much easier to do that to than something that's unwrapped into a circle. So these are the sorts of things you need to think about, and these are the sorts of things that come with experience. Um, on this one, I'm going to go, I, or I'm going to try to go with a nice flat unwrap like this. Yeah, there's more distortion with that, but you know, it all depends on what your end goal is. This piece, I, I will just flatten down to its own ring, or, or its own, just round UV island, that's fine. The rest of this, this top piece there really does need to be on its own because it's separate. I will grab all of this. Yeah, you know, there's a hard smoothing break here, so this is going to have to be its own thing, and I will unwrap that cylindrically. Hide that. Grab this. Hide that. Do this. Cylindrical. Hide that. Uh, the size of the UV islands and stuff and like what's happening on the left side are not really all that important right now. I'm, I'm just trying to get these these smashed out you know, in, into their own uh, UV islands right now. There's the packing and stuff, it really doesn't concern me at this point. So I'm going to do that. I back, grab all of this, do a cylindrical unwrap on Z I guess there it goes and on this it's the, it's the same sort of thing these these three rings need to be done as cylinders oh. hmm I wonder if I you know I don't think I want this on the low poly I'm gonna change my mind here and maybe just pull that in slightly because you are never going to see this part. So if that's not perfect, then I'm not too concerned about it. And it's just a bunch of UVs that we don't need to have have sitting around. This uh, splooge you're seeing is because I, you know, I modified the mesh and all that sort of thing. It's no biggie. All right. Where are we at? We've got just a couple things left. This is all one island. So I'm going to grab these pieces here, this bit of the floor, and we're going to put that out to its own thing. And I'll probably uh, rectangle that. Then moving down to the bottom, let's grab the whole bottom like this. And we'll just do it flat because it seems fine like that. Now up here, we have this piece on the inside here. Unwrap that. It, there's a lot of uh, stuff like this with a lot of cylindrical elements can be can be a little tedious and it can be a little tiring, but. It's just the nature of the beast. So I'm going to just do a 
uh, do an unwrap on this because and that's what unwrap does, but if I fire the rectangle command at it, that it snaps it all out to a nice straight island again and hide that up. And I apparently missed this. Where was that hiding? Oh, it's hiding inside of there. That actually seems like it's not needed. I'll just delete that. Sometimes your little, well very often your little poly is not going to be perfect and you're just going to have to adapt as you go. It's all part of the process. So this is just a thing to catch some detail that gets baked up here. I'm just going to jam that out to its own island. Hide that. Okay. This, I'll grab that and do it to its own island. This and this, probably the same. Yeah, just make that an island and make that an island. Okay. Now this round detail on the bottom here. This, I would probably throw in a couple of edge breaks there and there. And then go over here and see what that looks like on the unwrap. So if I rectangle, rectangle, I think that's probably fine. I'll hide that. Okay, something like this, which is all kind of shallow, shallow dips all the way down. This you can easily just do a single unwrap on. And that should be fine. Now the rest of this is all one piece. So I'm going to grab this and bring it around and grow that selection until I get to the hard break. Now that I'm there, we're going to unwrap that to its own island. Hide it. This this cutout hole, I'm going to grab that back that back polygon, that back section, make that an island. This I might be able to. This is the kind of thing that gets bothersome because there's some triangles and stuff in here. But we'll see what we can do with it. All right, you know what? Good. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I like the way that worked out. Okay, so grabbing this. Now, I know that on the high poly mesh, if I bring it back, there's a panel line right here on the high poly mesh, if you remember that. Now, panel lines are, uh, they not only look cool, they're also fantastic places to hide uh, UV seams. So since I know there's a uh, a panel line there, I'm going to use that edge as the as the split point for the unwrap. So doing that and doing an auto unwrap on this piece gives me this. Now I don't think I'm or, or I know that I'm not going to be able to rectangle this. No, because you know, it's not all quads and everything else. But I should be able to yeah, use a conformal unwrap to get it mostly there. And we may just have to live with this shape because it's just how that shape is. Okay. You know what? Yeah, anytime you have super, see I have these two super skinny the edges that are coming in here, that can cause problems on the bake. That's just something to be aware of. So I'll flip those and try to give them a little more area to work with. So they're not all, you know, squished up on the, on the bake and making everything kind of ugly. Uh, you know, uh, so another option is, is, is I could throw an edge loop through the low poly, connect it up to this problem spot. And then we have much, you know, a much more relaxed kind of topology. And yeah, there's a few extra vertices out here because of this, you know, this edge flying around. But in the end, it doesn't really matter all that much. It's not going to affect, it's not going to make or break your mesh. So 
Uh, with all the islands done, we're going to talk about packing. So with the uh, with the islands all created, I, I will unhide uh, all the islands that we've done. You, know, you can see the uh, holy mess that we've created here. But we just have to throw a pack at it. We tell it to pack and ignore stacking. And that'll jam everything down to the zero to one space. Now, this is obviously not an optimal pack. And I, I really don't like this. So uh, we're gonna massage it a little bit. Okay, that one. That, that one's flat and this one's not. So what I'm gonna do, so one, one quick tip that I do for, you know, if I have a cylinder like this, a round unwrap that I want to jam out to a, uh, a rectangle, I will just grab one piece, hold control shift and drag that piece out. Select the rest of the island, hit the rectangle command, grab this, stitch that, grab it again, rectangle. Now that's flattened out. And I'll just do that sequence of events for each island that I now realize need to be rectangular because they're just they're just chewing up space on the UV map. And since they're just edges, it doesn't really matter all that much. This was that top ring thing and I that could probably benefit from it as well from being a flattened piece. You know, but this is game art, right? You get in here, you make decisions, sometimes you're like yeah, that was kind of a dumb decision. This piece here, you're never going to see this really because it's jammed up inside. So it doesn't matter how I unwrap it in terms of visuals, but it does matter in terms of how well my, my pack will go. So it's probably worth doing the same thing here because I don't want this big circle on the UV map. What I want is a nice rectangular shape that can easily get packed in. Now there's a bunch there's a bunch more of these so I'm just gonna make the call now and say that I uh, we're gonna need to make these rectangular. Such is game art and such is the iteration. And this here needs to go. Okay, with those broken up, let's see what it packs like. Okay, we're still having problems because there are some large UV islands in here. And so because it's trying to keep everything the same texel size, uh, we're ending up with all of this wasted space over here, which is uh, kind of uncool. So it's at this point you need to start making, making sacrifices or uh, you're making decisions. So this is long and this is long. They are just super large islands. So what you, what you can do is select all the super large islands and deselect their top halves, then drag out the bottom halves. And now you've split it in two. Try the pack again and just keep going. You can see now we're closer to this edge because there was less stuff happening. This I will grab and break up in two. Pack it again. Still, I mean, it's, it's not bad. It's probably because of this island. So let me go ahead and just for giggles do this and see what this looks like. Pretty much it's because of that island. But by doing this, that introduces a seam right here, right on the front of the mesh, which can be problematic, you know, depending how you end up texturing things. We're going to, we're going to go for it because I like the way this is packed. And I think that it's worth the, um, that risk. <laughs> okay. So this is going to be the UV pack we end up with. And with that done, we're going to move on to the baking in the next uh, video. 
Now we're going to bake out the normal map and and talk about some issues there. See you then. Oh, uh, and just a quick note before we go. Uh, I wanted to clarify what I was saying earlier about taking cylindrical stuff like this and snapping it out to just a rectangular uh, island. The reason that results in a better pack is obviously you can pack rectangles together easier than you can round things. But Moto's auto packer doesn't use the space uh, inside of a UV island. So if I have this kind of uh, layout, it's never going to use the space that's sitting inside of the circle. It's never going to put anything there. Which means that if you have big circles with big holes in the middle, you, you're going to have a lot of uh, wasted UV space. Or space you have to go back to you know, and manually grab these little islands and move them inside and that kind of thing. But I'm sort of of the belief that if the auto pack gets me, you know, between 80 and 90% of the way there, it's, it's good enough in the vast majority of cases. And that kind of hand twiddling is just uh, tedious and, and not much fun. So... Yeah, I just wanted to make sure you knew the reasons why I was doing that. It, it's not because I'm being you know, like an anal retentive about whatever. It's it's partially be well, it's partially that, but it's also partially because that's how you get a better pack out of Moto. So there you go. Now, if you've been watching the channel for for a while now, you know that I used to use I pack that for every prop I did, and I ran this through I pack that just for a test, and it really didn't make much difference and it actually was kind of a worse result so uh, in this case uh, I pack that's not really the answer either so anyway we're gonna roll ahead with this unwrap see you in the next video